let's get as creative as Freddy with some fish blades and take a look at the most insane weapons in horror cinema that have been used to make fine, pulpy human paste the world over. Better take notes, guys, as you never know when you'll be driven to fight back with nothing more than an ear of corn. Oh god, this is gonna be a mess. I am the deadly Ash from What Culture, and these are the 10 craziest horror movie weapons and their best kill. 10. Water Sprinkler Leprechaun Returns It's pretty hard to nail down just one thing as a crazy weapon for the leprechaun when the whole series is populated with such nonsense. Pulverizing a ghost torso with a pogo stick in Leprechaun, impaling a fella with a bong in Back to the Hood, and conjuring a sex robot to electrocute a horn dog to death all deserve their mention, but it is the humble sprinkler that takes the spot, if only as a lesser known entry than the other, more iconic picks. So how about that sprinkler? Used in the timeline redefining Leprechaun Returns, a reboot and sequel to the first movie only, it crops up in a musical S number as the Leprechaun conducts a series of the watering mechanisms whilst chasing down an ill-fated young woman. After slowing her down with mild water streams, the Leprechaun magically shoves a water sprinkler into her poor face as she flees, resulting in the pressure popping a geyser of blood out of her mouth. We are starting small here, but still, of all things to kill someone with, a sprinkler? Really? 9. Machine Gun Leg Grindhouse Planet Terror From the innocuous to the outright ridiculous, this weapon levels the whole thing up times 100. Can you really get more badass than a machine gun shoved into Rose McGowan's severed leg? I don't think so, and Planet Terror's playground of zombie action that she unleashes this bad boy on only serves to make it that much more fantastic. This weapon is a uh, shoehorned, if you'll pardon the pun, into Robert Rodriguez's version of exploitation pushed to its limit, where a strange gas is unleashed over a town that turns them into hungry, hungry flesh-eating monsters. When McGowan's cherry has her leg chewed off and is left unable to pursue stand-up comedy, ha! She is often an alternative to the classic peg leg in a grenade-launching, bullet-spewing weapon of destruction slotted right into her thigh hole. Well, that's something. The best kill is actually a whole bunch of them, as Cherry is launched into the sky to perform what can only be described as a murderous dance routine. It is, ooh, ooh, chef's kiss. Thank you, Rodriguez, for this gift. 8. Basketball Deadly Friend there's no way any sort of mad weapon can be brought up without Deadly Friend's basketball making a bloody appearance, serving up a slam dunk in horror as it unashamedly splatters brains across the wall. No, a basketball would not explode your head in any normal throwing circumstances, unless it was dropped from the moon or something, but this powerful throw is anything but normal. Samantha is a robotically charged girl with evil microchip superpowers, and she's not about to take any crap from the intimidating Elvira. Though she's named like the horror host, the Elvira here is just a horror, antagonizing children and wielding shotguns about the place in typical old angry woman style. What Elvira does not bet on though is Samantha being given a new lease of life by her neighbor's mechanical engineering. Sam's throwing arm becomes a propulsion device able to launch a basketball into Elvira's aggy head and render her a shuffling, decapitated puppet surrounded by the raspberry jam of her own insides, marking the end of her bothersome ways. Well, that's one way of proving a point. 7. Microwave Last House on the Left, 2009 Microwaves have been used in horror movies more than once, with gremlins being one of the most infamous examples. Shoving one of the scaly bastards inside the cooker, a gremlin gets blown to smithereens in an effort to quell the uprising of tiny mischievous monsters. But it is not just gremlins that have their insides turned out, as films like Drive Thru, Book of Monsters, and Urban Legend have been unafraid to depict. One of the gnarliest microwave murders comes in the reels of Last House on the Left, however, with the 2009 remake serving up a horrifying ending that sees an incapacitated, paralyzed Krug placed with just his head in the little oven as it is turned on, and he's left to die. Some argue that this is a bit of a stretch. I argue that it is so satisfying to see this monster get his face blown outwards by a nonsensical, ridiculously invented death that it just doesn't matter, and adds to the whole experience to boot. 6. Mobile Phone – See No Evil Getting your one phone call when something bad happens is par for the course, really, with everyone from police officers to movie mobsters offering out that final chance to connect with someone before they put you where the sun doesn't shine. But there is one very different type of final phone call that is made all too common in horror movies, where a frustratingly incompetent character just forgets entirely how to work their trendy mobile phone and leaves the damn thing on loudspeaker when they're trying to hide. That is how you know we're dealing with movies from the 2000s, honestly. See No Evil has a character 
suffer such a fate. With her ringing phone bringing the ire of one eye-ripping murderer, Jacob Goodnight, crashing upon her. And just like most of us have imagined when we hear an annoying, blaring phone call ring out when it is nice and quiet in the cinema, Jacob grabs the phone, wokes her off the ground, and rams it down her throat. <sighs> Technology really will be the death of us, won't it? 5. Umbrella – Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 Silent Night, Deadly Night is the original movie that brought you such delights as hanging a woman from a mounted deer's head. So, it's only fair that the second entry ups the antlers somewhat. I'm not sorry for that pun. It is really good. It does look better written down, but it's still good. In the sequel, though, instead of a prize trophy, we are treated to the far more portable and convenient death via an umbrella, better suited to the practical murderer on the go. And a practical murderer on the go is what we have in Ricky, brother to the original movie Santa Claus Killer Billy. With jumper cables, car antennas, and a whole load of bullets, Ricky wreaks havoc on Christmas Eve once more, with by far his most innovative attack coming when he impales Rocco on an umbrella even taking the time to open the thing up for good measure. Which is kind of him, really, since it starts to rain not long after. Oh, fortunate. It is a ludicrous moment that comes with completely unnecessary flair. Who knew these little metal points on brollies could be so deadly? 4. Sex Machine's Codpiece Revolver and the Staking Machine from Dust Till Dawn. There's not much more that can be said about this one than what's already in the title, but Sex Machine's dick gun is a work of art into itself. A secret little pistol tucked away into his peen pouch, the twin loading cylinders make the perfect ammunition loaded balls to his silver shaft of shots. One that takes out Danny Trejo's vampiric menace when everything goes crazy. Truthfully, it doesn't outright kill him there and then, but it does pack enough punch to stretch what could be argued as killing his human form before he comes back as a vampire to then be staked with a pool cue or something. The codpiece revolver has appeared in the TV series and other Robert Rodriguez films, like Desperado, where it is seen in a guitar case and strapped onto Sofia Vergara in Machete Kilts. Still, it has yet to actually take someone out. But if we look a little further for some bloodshed, another wonderful weapon appears. The good old staking machine from the end of the movie. Created from a drill and a chunk of wood, it gets used to wipe vampires out to great effect, as can be seen with this kill. Two very solid weapons here. 3. Drill Guitar – Slumber Party Massacre 2 From one weapon fueled by the power of penis to another, we arrive at the phallic stand-in of the Drill Guitar from Slumber Party Massacre 2. Where one dick disappoints, though, another comes in to save the day, with a list of gruesome murders to its deadly drill bit attached to an electric guitar. The first kill is arguably this weapon's best, wielded by a rock star iteration of the Driller Killer who is intent on proving just how real he is to the terrified Courtney, convinced she's hallucinating. Driving his drill through her lover, he pulls it out, sprays the viscera about, and then picks up and shakes his dismembered arm for good measure. Well, you can colour Courtney convinced from there. The killer is very real and very horny for murder, chasing down the group of teens who just wanted to party and rock out for the weekend. That's what you get for not dealing with your repressed trauma in an effort to eke out a sequel movie, guys. Come on, learn. 2. An Ear of Corn – Sleepwalkers You know when you're just so mad you could drive a corn cob through someone's back and mortally wound them? Me neither, but Mary Brady sure does. As perhaps the most reductive description of the plot and Mary herself, she is a woman that is really into incest but not so hot on cats, as a result of being a shape-shifting, feline-like creature that feeds on virgin girls to stay fresh. It's a riff on vampire legend from the mind of Stephen King, and gets about as ridiculous as they come with this next-level killing. I guess you can't blame Mary for feeling all stabby when she catches a deputy in the middle of eating gross corn on the cob considering her palate is so refined. Breaking into a home in an attempt to get some good old virgin girl food, Mary isn't counting on a police officer being in the kitchen, who attempts to phone for backup. While his guard is down, she grabs the cob and jabs it into his back to kill him, uttering, no vegetables, no dessert, those are the rules. Looks like there's no better side dish than death. 1. Vacuum Cleaner – Dead Meat Dead Meat is not the most well-executed movie, but it does have one scene that will have you looking at poor old Henry the Hoover in an entirely new light. When it comes to zombie slaying, we have seen everything from the Leaning Tower of Pisa being dropped on bodies in Zombieland 2 to lawnmowers strapped to the chest in Braindead. But for sheer ingenuity in times of stress, 
sucking a fella's brains out with a vacuum cleaner has to really take the crown here. When a mutant strain of mad cow disease starts turning people in the Irish countryside into beings driven only by consuming flesh, a tourist and a grave digger band together and attempt to survive the outbreak. During their run of avoiding being turned into a bloody burger, poor Helena's pal is turned and comes to attack her as she seeks help in a cottage. So Helena grabs whatever is to hand in order to defend herself. Whatever is to hand turns out to be the pipe of a hoover she attaches firmly to his eye socket. Cue some gnarly sucking, some brains evacuating their body, and a slumped guy left properly dead this time. Ugh.